Hello and welcome to the the fourth of our uh, fourth episode in our series of uh, introduction to the racing rules. Uh, tonight we're joined by Chris Atkins, who's going to take us through the the first of two parts that we've got on marks and the rules that we'll we'll find uh, to interact with at, at marks. Chris is uh, is an international umpire and international judge. Um, he's a, also a highly respected rules expert who regularly officiates at the highest level across the whole breadth of the sport, uh, from Optimus Championships to the Volvo Ocean Race. So we're lucky to have him here with us to, to present this episode and hopefully he'll help help us all understand exactly those those rules that apply at marks and how to get the most out of our mark roundings. Um, before we start, just a couple of reminders. If, you, if you've got any questions throughout the throughout the episode then please just pop them in the uh, in the chat box on the right if you're watching this live on Wednesday night if you're watching it later then please pop it in the comments box at the bottom and we'll do our best to try and answer them uh, if you if you like this session then please give it a like give it a share and um, <clears throat> make sure you subscribe to the our ways YouTube channel so that you you get the reminders about future episodes coming up all right, so that's it for me, and I'll now hand over to Chris. So welcome everyone to today's webinar on rules of marks, when we're going to cover the remaining two important rules. They're titled Rule 18, Mark Room, and 21, Exoneration. But first, a bit of a philosophy slide. Rules for me, they're not about protests. They're about winning races. They address situations when boats meet and they tell you who has to give way and who can carry on sailing at full speed. So they're about overtaking. And we all know that fleets converge at marks. Marks provide the best opportunity, apart from the start, for overtaking. And if you're going to be a successful sailor, you've got to know your mark room. Now, it's a long rule, the longest rule in the book. And we don't have time to go through each and every paragraph. What I hope to do in this webinar is show you that actually the principles are pretty simple. And therefore, you can make your decisions at the speed of the race. Now, most of us, I guess, we learn our rules by initially sailing in clubs. And club understanding of rule 10, port must keep clear of starboard, is actually pretty good. With mark room, yeah, the rule has changed quite a bit over the years. And there are quite a lot of versions of the truth out there. So I'm going to try and explain simply how the rule works but please be ready to question your current understanding as we go through. As it's a long rule, we're gonna split it into two sessions. Today, I'm gonna to cherry pick. I'm gonna cover the essentials that will tell you how the rule works. Then in a couple of weeks time, my colleague, John Napier, will go through the remainder of the rules the elements we haven't had time to cover today. So this session, we're going to cover the definition. What is mark room? We're going to cover the two key rules, 18.2b and 21. We're going to talk to selected others as we go through. But above all, we're going to focus on how the mark room rule applies in conjunction with other rules. We need to see the rule not as something that stops other rules applying, but something that sits on top of the other rules and applies with them as we're going around the mark. Okay, so the purpose of the rule. Fleets converge at marks, and what we want is a rule that enables us to have safe and orderly rounding of the marks. The rule is mark room, and that's all it does. It says who has to give mark room to who. The principles are pretty simple too. If you're behind, don't push in. 
let the boats ahead of you go around first. If you're on the outside, give room to those inside you to go around inside you. The tricky elements, and these are therefore the three sessions of this presentation, is first, how do we decide who's outside or behind and has to give mark room? Second, how much room is mark room? And third, how do we combine it with the other rules that apply at the same time? So first, who has to give mark room? The rule that tells you this is 18.2b. It addresses the two normal situations and it has a sentence for each. The first is if boats are overlapped when the first of them reaches the zone. Here we see blue and yellow are overlapped. The outside boat blue shall thereafter give the inside boat mark room. Thereafter. This means until the obligation has been fully met or until rule 18.2b stops applying. The experts in the audience will know that it's 18.2d that tells you when 18.2b ceases to apply. The second sentence, the second situation, is when a boat reaches the zone clear ahead. And that happens here between red and yellow. Red must give yellow mark room. Roll forward the action by one length, and you see the now blue clear ahead has reached the zone. Red must give blue mark room. This also nicely illustrates the fact that the rule is written between pairs of boats. You apply it not to the fleet as a whole, but to individual pairs of boats, and that tells you who has to give whom mark room. And the rule is just written as an obligation. It says that one boat, in this case blue or red, has to give another boat mark room. All the other rules continue to apply. I said 18.2b addresses the normal situation. One situation that it doesn't address is when between the two boats, it's the boat clear astern that reaches the zone first. Obviously, this is not a very common situation, but here the picture shows how it might happen. As rule 18.2b here doesn't apply, yellow is clear astern of blue when she reaches the zone. 18.2a says that it applies instead. And it says that if the boats do later become overlapped, the outside boat blue shall give the inside boat yellow mark room, which I think is what you'd probably expect. So here at position two, the boats were overlapped, blue must give yellow mark room. But worse for blue, have a look at her stern angle when she enters the zone. The whole of the rest of the fleet approaching on starboard now have mark room over her. Bad place to be. For those of you who follow horse racing, it's a bit like being the outside horse at the canal turn in the Grand National. Everyone overtakes you. So just as the tip, the sensible thing is if you are outside of a group of boat, then a little bit before the zone, make sure you slow down, slot in behind them on the inside, and you could avoid being overtaken by as many boats as blue is going to here. Okay, so that's decided who has to give markram. The next and the biggest question of all, how much room is markram? Well, it's a defined term. So we know that if we go to the definitions section of the rule book, we'll find the answer. 
and it's a six-line definition. The three last three lines address one particular case, which is typically applies at a starboard hand windward mark when the boat with markram tacks. We're going to leave that to John uh, for two weeks' time, and we're going to focus on the first three lines of the definition. We're going to look to apply them to the two types of mark. We have rounding marks and passing marks. If we look first at a rounding mark, a rounding mark is a mark where a boat's proper course is to sail close to it. So there, paragraph A applies in rounding marks when her proper course is to sail close to it. And paragraph B also applies because she has to go round it. Whereas at a passing mark, neither A nor B apply. So the important bit of the definition is just that first sentence in red. Now, before we apply the definition, just a quick check. Which of these two boats? yellow or blue, must keep clear. Hands up for blue, hands up for yellow. Well, looking at those inside, in front of me, I can see Neil, well done. You've got it right, yellow must keep clear. Yellow is windward boat, rule 11 says windward boat must keep clear. Blue has a separate obligation, which is to give mark room. So let's see how the rule applies at a passing mark. Blue right away boat changes course slightly. Yellow duly meets her obligations under rule 11, keeps clear. Blue meets her obligation under 18.2b and gives yellow room to leave the mark on the required side. No boat breaks a rule. The slightly more complex application is at a rounding mark. Here's sentences A and B apply, so let's have a look at them. Blue has to give yellow room to sail to the mark, and then room to round the mark as necessary to sail the course. The best way to think of this is as a corridor. From position one, blue has to let yellow sail a straight course to as close as she can be alongside the mark when sailing in a seaman-like way, and then room to round the mark. A couple of questions people ask on the corridor. Now, how wide is it? Well, it doesn't have to be that wide for a boat to sail in a straight line. But it is the space that you need when sailing in a seaman-like way. So in tides, in strong winds, in waves, it will be slightly wider than in, other, in flat water conditions. Also, because it's about room, room always includes room to comply with the rules. So if here you're green, you have to give blue sufficient mark room so that she can also give mark room to yellow. So blue's corridor is going to be outside yellow's. Okay, so let's now apply the corridor. The corridor is the space that yellow is entitled to. If blue gives yellow this space, Blue complies with her obligation to give mark room under 18.2b. And the flip side, and this is the other key rule, is rule 21 says that if yellow sails in this space in the corridor, she is safe. What do we mean by safe? Well, let's have a look at rule 21. It's about exoneration. Exoneration is a good thing. If you break a rule and are exonerated, you don't need to take a penalty. 
Uh, rule 21 says that if yellow is sailing within the mark room to which she is entitled, she is exonerated if in an instant with blue, she breaks any of a set of rules. In this case, it's if she breaks rule 11, when we both shall keep clear, or is compelled to break rule 31, which is touching the mark. So here's the relationship between the two boats approaching the mark. Blue must comply with 18.2b, give yellow mark room. Yellow must comply with rule 11, keep clear. But if yellow is sailing in the corridor and fails to keep clear of blue, then the problem is probably caused by blue not giving mark room. Blue breaks rule 18.2b for not giving mark room. Yellow is exonerated by rule 21 for breaking rule 11. So a lot of things to get your head around, but to try and consolidate them, I've created four, the four typical examples that you're going to get at the end of a reach when you're rounding up to go onto a beat. And have a go, look at each one and decide, does blue give mark room? Does yellow keep clear? Is either boat exonerated? To try and mirror the requirement to do this at race speed, uh, I'll just stay silent for 60 seconds, uh, giving you the opportunity to work through them. And to help you, I'll draw on these pictures the corridor that is appropriate for the wind conditions of the day. So there we have it. Uh, Samantha's started the clock, uh, so I'll stay silent for 60 seconds. So you've had 30 seconds, you should be down at instance three and four by now. Okay, time's up. So situation number one, does blue outside give yellow mark room as required? Yes. Blue gives yellow plenty of space to sail between those two yellow lights. Does yellow when we both keep clear? No. The presence of yellow clearly causes blue to have to alter course between positions two and three. So yellow breaks rule 11. Is yellow exonerated? No, she's not sailing in the corridor. So the decision is yellow will have to take a penalty for breaking rule 11. Situation two, does blue give yellow mark room to sail? Answer, no. Blue herself sails into the corridor, blocking yellow's path. Does yellow keep clear? No. Clearly, between positions two and three, the presence of yellow causes blue to have to alter course to avoid contact. But is yellow exonerated? Yes, because she's sailing in the corridor. So the decision is blue breaks rule 18.2b, yellow exonerated by rule 21 for breaking rule 11. Situation three, what a nice sailor blue is. Very popular at the club, but doesn't win many races. Bears away big distance, so much 
that yellow actually has room to come out of the corridor while still keeping clear. And this makes illustrates an interesting point. Yellow is sailing entirely legally at position three. The corridor is the space the boat needs from where she legally is. So the corridor now is from position three to four. Blue has to give yellow room from position three to sail to the mark. So both boats comply with the rules. Whereas situation four, blue's a little bit more pushy here. I'm gonna give you ro mark room, but not an inch more. And blue actually does that really well. So well that yellow may well have to tack off immediately after the mark. No boat breaks the rule, but blue needs to be a little bit careful. If blue gets too close of position three, she must still comply with 16.1 as she alters course between positions three and four. And if she gets too close, that's going to be difficult. So yeah, be pushy, but not too pushy. Otherwise, you might break some other rules. So those four situations are the four situations that come when the inside boat must keep clear on a reach turning up onto a beat. The other situations when the inside boat must keep clear come at the starboard mark at the end of a run. Let's have a look at them. Here positions one and two, blue clearly gives mark room in both. Yellow clearly fails to keep clear in both. We see that because blue, shortly before position two, has to change course to avoid yellow. In the first instance, yellow's in the corridor, so it's ex exonerated. In the second instance, yellow is not in the corridor, so will be penalized for breaking rule 10. Situations three and four, let's now have a look at skiffs. And you can see that position three, yellow is sailing in the corridor. Blue now needs to take action to avoid yellow and give her mark room. Whereas position four, yellow is not sailing in the corridor. Blue is giving her mark room and yellow now has to take the avoiding action. These two pictures illustrate one other rule. It's sometimes necessary to anticipate, in particular if you're sailing either fast boats or in very crowded fleets. And you have to anticipate before reaching the zone a requirement to get mark rule. The rule that addresses this is 18.2F. It's a bit of a long rule. So just for this session, we do the principle, which is that if you are outside overlapped, you must anticipate your obligation. If you're not overlapped, if you're clear ahead, then you don't have to anticipate until the overlap is established. So that concludes this session on what is mark room. In all of them, you will have noticed that it's the boat that must keep clear that has mark room. So to the final section, and in this section, we look at incidents when the keep clear boat has to give mark room. This is different because when a boat that has to give mark room also has to keep clear, the obligation to keep clear is always a bigger obligation than the obligation to give mark room. So we can almost forget about mark room. Also, if it's the lured boat that has mark room, now rule 17 might come into play because that might limit the course that the boat with mark room can serve. 
So if we have a look at three typical instances where this might happen, and look first at the two on the left. Here we can see the blue, the keep clear boat, the windward boat must also give yellow mockram. Yellow, obviously she can sail in the corridor. Whether she can sail higher than the course in the corridor will depend on whether rule 17 applies. And finally, right away boat changing course, rule 16.1 obviously applies. When yellow changes course, she must give blue room to keep clear. Except if yellow is sailing in the corridor, then rule 21 exonerates her for breaking rule 16.1. When might this happen? Well, rarely, but when it might happen, for instance, if you're sailing keel boats with stern swing and you're yellow, you reach the mark, you bear away hard, your stern swings out. If as a result, blue fails to keep clear, you are exonerated for breaking rule 16.1 because you're sailing in the corridor. So that's uh, at windward and offward mark. If we have a look at a jive mark, if we look at the instant at the end of a, a jiving mark, there is one extra rule to take into account. That's rule 18.4. It says that when an inside overlapped right away boat, which in this case is yellow, must jibe at the mark to sail her proper course. Until she jibes, she shall sail no further from the mark than needed to sail that course. So yellow inside overlapped a right of way is constrained to sail a course that's roughly as shown in the yellow arrow there. The reason for this rule is the safe and orderly rounding of the mark. We want blue to be able to plan and prepare for how she is going to round, either outside or astern of yellow. And this rule allows her to do that. A small point about it, it doesn't apply at gate marks. The logic here is that the right of way boat should be able at any time to choose which mark to go to. She is, after all, right of way. Therefore, it doesn't apply at gate marks. And if you think this picture is vaguely familiar, well, it is. It's exactly that picture that we had a look at right at the start of this presentation. Denmark is blue on port on the outside, but relatively safe, even that close to Russia on starboard, because she knows Russia is compelled by rule 18.4 just keep sailing a proper course. If we put the other two boats onto this diagram, we can see how all four boats complied with rule 18 as they rounded this mark. So Finland, the green in first place, reached the zone clear ahead of all boats. All boats must give her mark room. And as she's approaching the mark, she doesn't have any boat outside her, so she's safe to sail to leeward of the corridor if she chooses to. Blue and yellow, they reach the zone overlapped. Yellow constrained not by the corridor, but by rule 18.4, not to sail wider than a proper course. Blue gives her room to do that. Note just after position two, yellow's about to jibe. When yellow jibes, she will now become windward, keep clear boat. Corridor will apply. So if she goes outside the corridor, 
she risks breaking rule 11, windward lured boat with blue. So she has to round up tight as soon as she jibes. Orange reaches the zone. Uh, Orange has to give Markram to all the boats because when they reach the zone, they're all clear ahead of her. Those boats include Blue, who's on port. So Orange on starboard has to give Markram to Blue on port. Blue is safe if she's sailing in the corridor. And you can see that Blue is sailing as close to the mark as she possibly can, given her obligation to keep clear of yellow. Orange, as required, goes round behind all four, and we have a successful, safe, and orderly rounding of a mark. It's not always the same. This is what we want to avoid. This is the purpose of the market rule. So thank you for your time. We've covered a lot of rules in a short time. And it's likely that for some of you, not all of it has yet slotted into a simple, clear picture. My best guidance is that between now and John's sessions, I'd suggest you just reread three or four times, those few key rules. Definition of Markram, Rule 18.2b, Rule 21, Rule 18.4. And when you're doing so, bear in mind the following summary. When the first of two boats reaches the zone, Rule 18.2b, places an obligation on the boat outside or clear astern to give mark room to the other boat thereafter. This obligation doesn't turn off any other rules. They continue to apply. How much mark room is defined? How much mark is mark room? How much room is mark room is defined? It's best visualized as a corridor straight to, and then round the mark. When a keep clear boat has to give mark room, she is also required to keep clear, which is a bigger obligation. So mark room doesn't really matter. However, at a jive mark, rule 18.4 limits how wide an inside right of way boat can sail. When it's the right-of-way boat who has to give mark room, the corridor is the critical rule. If the inside boat is in the corridor and fails to keep clear, she is sailing in the mark room to which she is entitled and is exonerated. If she is not in the corridor and fails to keep clear, she's penalized. So thank you again for your time and for all those questions you've posted. Do hope to see you again next week when we've got Mark Russell talking about the run and rule 17. Thanks for listening. Well, thank you very much, Chris, for a very interesting uh, episode there. Hopefully that uh, made sense to everybody. As Chris says, really uh, need to go back have a read through rule 18 again in your rule book, try and get your head around it. Remember, you can go back and, and watch this uh, this episode at any time you want, um, pause it, have a think about the scenarios, rerun it, and then talk about it. Uh, if you've got any further questions, then please just pop them in the comments below. And similarly, if you've got any feedback on this episode or any of the others, then, then please send that in to us. We'd love to hear it. So. Thanks very much, and we hope to see you again for the, the next episode with Mark Rushall.